Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain Triple X. This movie tells the story of a man who likes to do extreme sports and is recruited by the United States NSA agency to carry out a big mission in the Czech country. This dangerous mission actually led him to a big secret that was unexpected. Will he succeed in carrying out this mission? Let's find out in Triple X. Triple X begins by showing a man who is an agent of the United States NSA who is assigned to carry out a mission. In this mission, the agent was asked to steal a secret chip owned by a criminal organization called Anarchy 99. Unfortunately, that night when the agent was about to escape from Anarchy 99's headquarters, he was shot dead by one of Anarchy 99's snipers, resulting in a chip grab mission that was declared a failure. The failure of the NSA agent this time made the head of the NSA agency named Augustus Gibbons feel very angry. That's because the three best NSA agents were sent on this mission and all of these agents failed to steal Anarchy 99's chips. However, Anarchy 99 is not an easy opponent for the NSA agency because the criminal organization members are mostly former United States military personnel. Seeing this condition, Gibbons then suggested that their agency recruit a civilian to be their agent so that the Anarchy 99 organization would not feel suspicious. Gibbons has collected personal data from several civilian candidates who will be recruited as NSA agents in this mission. One of Gibbons' candidates is a man who likes to do extreme sports named Xander Cage. The scene changes to Xander Cage disguised as a parking attendant at a luxury hotel so he can steal a sports car belonging to a senator named Dick Hotchkiss. After successfully bringing the car, Xander took the car to his colleagues to install some cameras in the car. After that, he drove the car at high speed while doing a live stream and let the police car chase behind him. He did this as a form of protest against Senator Hotchkiss, who had banned the circulation of rap music and video games in California. When he arrived at a bridge, Xander performed a phenomenal stunt by jumping from a car that he accidentally dropped from the bridge until the car exploded. In the evening, Xander comes to the headquarters of the extreme sports community called Triple X when they arrive at the base. The other members of Triple X greet him very lively because of his success in his previous mission. When Xander was talking to his friends, suddenly special forces came and stormed the place. All members of the Triple X community ran away from the place in droves. Meanwhile, Xander couldn't run because he was surrounded by dozens of Special Forces members. As soon as everyone left, one of the members of the Special Forces shot him with a drug bullet until he passed out. When Xander woke up, he found himself already in a small restaurant the next day. One of the waiters at the place approached him and said that he had been deliberately brought into the restaurant by two big men. The maid also signaled Xander to be wary of the two men beside him. The two men pointed their guns at Xander a few seconds later and immediately attacked him. Xander quickly fought back against the two men and defeated them in no time. It turned out that all of that was just a setting prepared by Gibbons who was looking to test Xander's ability to fight. After successfully passing the test, Xander's is again shot unconsciously. Sometime later, Xander wakes up in a fighter plane with several members of the military army. On the plane, Xander met with two other candidates named TJ and Furch. Xander then realized that this incident was part of a test prepared by Gibbons and the NSA agency. Shortly after, the military forces began parachuting Xander and two other candidates to be thrown off the plane. Xander, Furch and TJ land on a cocaine field owned by a drug cartel. Shortly after, the drug cartel group came to arrest the residents or intruders in the cocaine field. Seeing the cartel group coming, TJ and Furch immediately ran away from the place while Xander just remained silent because they thought that all this was part of the test given by Gibbons. One of the drug cartel members then beats Xander with a gun until he faints. Not long after, Xander woke up from his stupor and found himself and two other candidates tied up in a warehouse. Apparently, Furch and TJ were caught by the drug cartel group. In the evening, a man who is the boss of the drug cartel group came. At first, Xander and the other two laughed at the man's acting because they thought that this arrest was also part of the test that Gibbons had prepared. But when Xander smelled that the smell of blood in the drug boss's machete was the smell of human blood, he immediately realized that all of this was no longer part of the Gibbons test. Before the man slashes him, Xander quickly kicks the man and immediately frees himself from the chains. At the same time, Air Force military troops came to the location and directly attacked the base. Xander, Furch and TJ immediately save themselves and intend to escape from that place. Xander carries TJ who has been injured by a shot in the stomach, to a safer place, while Furch prefers to run away with cocaine. Xander then looks for a vehicle to be able to take TJ away from that place. After successfully finding a motorbike, Xander immediately picked up TJ. But when he arrived at where TJ was hiding, some special forces came and immediately arrested them. The following day, Gibbons comes before Xander and says he has passed all the tests to become an NSA agent. In the final test, 
Gibbons deliberately places Xander in a drug cartel headquarters to lure the drug cartel bosses out of hiding. After that, Gibbons gives him two choices, namely working with the NSA as a special agent or serving in prison for all his criminal records. When Gibbons saw the 30 tattoo on the back of Xander's neck, Gibbons then gave him the nickname Triple X. Sometime later, Xander who has decided to become an NSA special agent, begins his first mission. On this mission, Xander is sent to the city of Prague in the Czech Republic and is met with a Czech secret policeman named Milan Sova. Milan will later help Xander in his mission to approach and find information about the criminal organization Anarchy 99. That night, Milan invites Xander to come to a nightclub managed by the Anarchy 99 organization. When arriving at the club, Milan shows Xander a man named Jordi who is the boss of the criminal organization Anarchy 99. While Milan explained their plan to Xander, Xander suddenly went up to the room where Jordi was. Xander then approached by saying that he wanted to buy a luxury car from Jordi. At first, Jordi did not take Xander's words seriously and immediately asked him to leave. But Xander with his ingenuity tried to win the trust of Jordi by saying that he found a police officer at the club who was none other than Milan. After Xander proved that Milan was a police officer, Milan was immediately expelled from the place. Thanks to this information, Xander managed to gain the trust of Jordi and several members of Anarchy 99 who turned out to be fans of his extreme actions. After that, Xander said he would buy 10 rare Ferrari cars and one GTO from Jordi. Jordi then asked one of his women, named Yelena to find the car and take care of Xander's transactions. Yelena then gave Xander two days to transfer the $1.2 million to Jordi's account. The following day, Gibbons calls Xander and asks about the money he is asking for. Xander then gave some important information to Gibbons and said that the amount of money would be proportional to the information they would get later. Hearing this, Gibbons finally agreed to the budget and asked Xander to know more about the Anarchy 99 organization. The next day, Xander is met with a weapons technology expert named Toby. Toby then equips Xander with a special gun that can load several different bullets, starting from red bullets that can be used to fake someone's death, then there are explosive bullets and stun bullets. Toby then gives Xander an advanced pair of binoculars to see through objects and an explosive bandage. After that, Xander came to meet the Anarchy 99 organization to make an exchange. When the transaction was made, Milan secretly went to the location to document the transaction activities carried out by Jordi. Unfortunately, the glass that Milan was leaning against suddenly broke and this created suspicion between Jordi and Xander. Jordi and Xander automatically point guns at each other because they think they have betrayed each other. Jordi then decides to lower his gun and invites Xander to go after Milan. On the way, Xander reloads his gun with red bullets so he can fake Milan's death. When Jordi and Xander managed to catch up to Milan, Xander immediately shot Milan from behind until Milan fainted. Jordi who thought that Xander had killed Milan, began to believe him. The next night, Xander is invited to a nightclub belonging to the organization Anarchy 99 because the relationship between Xander and Jordi is getting closer. That night, Xander gets information that most of the members of Anarchy 99 are ex-Russian soldiers who are fed up with a life of prolonged war. After that, Xander was invited to the main headquarters of Anarchy 99. The following day, while everyone was still asleep, Xander secretly infiltrated the monitor room to investigate where the central communication station belonging to the Anarchy organization was. Shortly after, Yelena suddenly came into the room, so Xander had to hide. Seeing Yelena's mysterious behavior, Xander decided to approach her because he felt sure that Yelena was a secret agent. However, Yelena denies Xander's accusations and says she is just preparing to sell the mysterious object in the safe. Xander, who doesn't believe Yelena, asks her to have lunch together and then he leaves the room, saying that the policeman he shot before is actually still not dead. Later that morning, Jordi received a call from one of his informants that Xander was actually an undercover NSA agent. In the afternoon, Xander and Yelena had lunch together at a restaurant. On that occasion, Xander explained to Yelena that he was actually a United States NSA agent. But Yelena only thought Xander's words were a joke because his appearance didn't look like a government agent. Shortly after, Yelena received a call from one of the members of Anarchy 99 named Kirill who said that by now Yordi already knew that Xander was an NSA agent. Hearing this, Yelena realizes that Xander is really a secret agent. Yelena then decides to help Xander by warning him that now Kirill is ready outside to shoot him because Yordi has known his equation. Yelena then gave information to Xander about the secret activities that Yordi was doing with several researchers in the basement of Anarchy 99 headquarters. However, Yelena still didn't know what secret activities Yordi was doing because she was never allowed to enter the dungeon. After that, Xander and Yelena deliberately made a scene in the restaurant and pretended to fight each other so that Kirill would not suspect Yelena. With his tactics, Xander finally escaped Kirill's sniper fire. As soon as Xander escapes from Kirill's pursuit, Two members of the NSA agents come to pick him and bring him before Gibbons. 
because Xander's disguise has been exposed. Gibbons orders Xander to return to America because he will complete this mission by slaughtering all members of Anarchy 99. Hearing this, Xander tries to prevent Gibbons and says that not all members of Anarchy 99 are bad people. At night, Xander secretly infiltrates Anarchy 99's headquarters to save Yelena and find out information about Yordi's activities in the dungeons. He added some Anarchy 99 guards and put explosive plaster on the vehicles of Anarchy 99 members before he finally infiltrated the headquarters room. After that, Xander followed Yordi and Yelena into the basement. In the secret room, Yordi explains to Yelena that he is building a submarine that can circumnavigate the world and can launch biological weapons. Meanwhile, Xander tries to see all of Yordi and Yelena's activities from behind a wall using see-through binoculars. However, his actions were discovered by other members of Anarchy 99, so he had to immediately flee from that place. Fortunately, all the things that Xander had prepared before him could make him escape from the base easily. When Xander returned to his hiding room, Milan was suddenly in the room and immediately pointed at Xander with a gun. It turned out that Milan had defected from the NSA and chose to work with Yordi because she got a higher salary than Yordi. Fortunately, before Milan could shoot Xander, she had already been killed by Yelena. Yelena then explained that she was actually an agent from the Russian intelligence agency who was assigned to infiltrate the Anarchy 99 organization two years ago. However, due to changes in the internal structure of the institution that houses her, Elena was later released from the mission. Elena finally tries to survive in the Anarchy 99 organization so that she is not hunted and killed by Yordi. After that, Xander informs Gibbons about Yordi's submarine that will soon be used to launch biological weapons worldwide. Hearing this, Gibbons again asks Xander to return to the United States because he had provided sufficient information to the NSA. In the evening, Xander promises Elena that he will ask Gibbons to provide asylum assistance to her so that she can be safely freed from the Anarchy 99 organization. Although Gibbons has asked Xander to return to the United States, Xander decides to stay in the Czech country and stop Yordi's evil plans. The following night, Xander goes to the Czech police station for reinforcements. He then meets Tobai to be able to equip his car with weapons that can make it easier for him to fight the Anarchy 99 organization. The following day, Xander begins to put his plan into action. First of all, he destroyed the communication tower belonging to the Anarchy 99 organization in the Snow Mountains to disrupt the surveillance cameras. After throwing a bomb at the communication tower, Xander immediately slides using a snowboard to escape from the avalanche. After that, he allowed himself to be caught by members of Anarchy 99, so he could buy time until the Czech police arrived at the base. When Xander is met with Yordi, Yordi says that he has discovered Yelena's disguise as a secret agent. Yordi also said his plan was to create chaos in the world and create a lawless state order. Shortly after that, Czech police forces barged in by blowing up the entire Anarchy 99 headquarters building. Seeing that the situation was getting out of control, Yordi decided to immediately leave, carrying a hard drive from his computer. Seeing this, Elena and Xander immediately took weapons and chased after Yordi. It turned out that Yordi had deliberately brought a hard drive from his computer to activate his submarine which had been installed with several biological weapon rockets. After releasing the submarine, Yordi used the speedboat that had been prepared beforehand. Fortunately, Xander managed to catch up and shoot Yordi until he died. After that, Xander and Yelena went by using the car that Tobai had armed to chase the submarine that had been released by Yordi. During the chase, Yelena tells Xander that the biological weapon can be destroyed if the ship is sunk in deep waters. On the other hand, Gibbons and Czech military soldiers then pursued the submarine. Meanwhile, Xander decides to approach the submarine using a hook thrower so he can land on the submarine. He then opened the control panel to be able to deactivate the ship, but Xander suddenly panicked because the biological rocket suddenly appeared from the submarine. Xander then tried to remove the hard drive on the panel and immediately flipped the tip of the rocket. This caused the submarine to sink into the water and explode. Seeing the explosion, Elena and Gibbons who had arrived at the scene, looked shocked. Elena felt very sad because she thought that Xander had died in the explosion. According to Xander's last request, Gibbons then approached Yelena and said that he would provide asylum assistance to Yelena. Shortly after, Yelena who heard a voice from the other side of the bridge immediately checked it. It turned out that Xander was still alive and managed to survive the explosion. Gibbons and Yelena feel very happy and relieved to see Xander survive. The film closes with a scene where Yelena and Xander enjoy their vacation on an island called Bora Bora. This film teaches us a lot that many big and dangerous things in the world can harm many people, and if we are allowed to prevent that from happening, then we must fight for the safety of many people.